The E7 Power, a low-end budget phone from Moto after a long time. I had the opportunity to use it for a day, so let me share my initial impressions with you and let's also see if it's worth considering. Unboxing went smooth, you get the phone, a Type-C cable and a 10 watt charger. Yes, this is one of the very few phones under 8500 rupees to come with a Type-C port. The 10 watt charger takes quite a long time to charge the phone given that there's a 5000 mAh battery inside. But again, for the price, we cannot complain. No other phone in this segment comes with a fast charger, I guess. Uh, the battery life seems to be quite impressive. When we unboxed the phone uh, a couple of days ago, there was about 30% charge left. My videographer took a lot of B-rolls, he downloaded some apps, uh, used Twitter for a bit, etc, etc. And then today, which is uh, February 19th, I used it for a couple of hours, watched a couple of videos on YouTube, played Headball 2 for some time, watched about 5-10 to 10 minutes uh, of some, some TV show on Prime Video, uh, then took some pictures as well. And after all of this, there is still around 5% charge left, which I think is impressive. Uh, in impressive considering the brightness was set to 100% the entire time. I mean, it's not a very bright display, it's a very average display that you generally find in this price segment. Uh, that's the reason I had to crank it up to 100% even for indoor usage. Outdoors, needless to say, you won't have a great viewing experience. Uh, it's a large display, uh, about 6.5 inches. The resolution is HD+. However, there is no Widevine L1 certification, so it's not possible to actually stream content in HD resolution. Uh, only up to 480p is possible. But of course, this does not apply to YouTube videos. On YouTube, any resolution works. Even 1440p works for some reason. The colors and contrast are okay for the price. But what surprised me uh, every single time I played something is the audio from the loudspeaker. It's actually placed on the rear and weirdly, I kind of liked it a lot because first off, loudspeakers on these budget phones generally don't get very loud and to make things worse, they're generally placed on the side, uh, side as in the bottom near the uh, type, type, uh, type, type, uh, type, type C port which we tend to cover using our hand while watching something or playing something in the landscape mode. So the audio becomes feeble or not very audible. But here on the E7 Power, uh, the rear placement means no matter how you hold it, uh, you know, you get to hear everything easily and clearly. Yes, the audio actually fires away from you, but still it's quite good, trust me. Really, really good considering the price. So yeah, uh, we were talking about battery life. Uh, you can expect anywhere between 1.5 to 2 days battery life on medium usage. Of course, there is no question about heavy usage on, on such an ultra budget phone because uh, it uses the Helio G25 chip, uh, which can only do so much. There is a bit of lag in the user interface while navigating between apps and going through settings and stuff. Uh, overall, it's okay. Uh, it's actually totally fine for your daily dose of social media, YouTube, messaging, phone calls, etc. Even light games are fine. Surprisingly, uh, Headball 2 did not lag at all. The gameplay was good. Uh, I do remember this game lagging in, lagging a bit on some other budget phones. But here, it works alright. However, don't expect anything heavier than this to run smoothly. Games like Call of Duty, Genshin Impact are not meant to run smoothly on such low-end devices. But overall, Everything else is reasonably smooth. The fact that this runs on stock Android really helps. Uh, although there is a bit of lag in the animations and uh, while scrolling as well, like I said earlier. But overall, it feels snappy. Uh, the apps can load pretty fast. Most other actions are also pretty quick in terms of response. A part of the reason is the use of EMCP storage, which is technically faster than EMMC storage. I think this is one of the two phones uh, in this price segment that use EMCP storage. The other one is the Micromax in 1B. Also, most other phones in this segment tend to use LPDDR4 RAM, but this one has LPDDR4X RAM. Important disclaimer, my experience so far is based on the 4GB RAM variant of the E7 Power. There is another variant with just 2GB RAM. I highly doubt you'll get this kind of decent experience with that variant. Uh, not just for the Moto E7 Power guys, any phone video that you watch on any YouTube channel, just know that brands more or less always send us the higher end variants. So that's something you should keep in mind. 
back to the software uh, stock android as you know it does not have you know it does not have too many fancy features it's the bare bones version of android uh, with support for face unlock uh, it has uh, this thing called performance optimization and there are some useful uh, gestures as well you can swipe on the fingerprint scanner to bring the notification panel you can chop twice to turn on the flashlight uh, and and so on my personal favorite thing about the software is there is absolutely no bloatware no ads no annoying unnecessary no no notifications ever since i started using this trust me i didn't see even a single piece of content that felt intrusive and of course there is support for uh, google assistant in fact there is a dedicated button for uh, you know it's it's above the volume rockers you can trigger google assistant with that button cool there is also a fingerprint scanner on the rear which is again quite rare to see in this price segment uh, as in under 8500 rupees and it's actually quite fast and accurate no issues whatsoever and uh, i'm sure uh, you noticed how the back panel looks well this is definitely not my favorite color uh, it's also available in another color red but i think that also looks too fancy for my taste i don't i don't know maybe it's just how it looks in the photo i still wish there was a simple plain black variant everything else about this back panel is really good it looks like matte finish but it's it's actually got a very smooth te texture it's quite firm and rigid guys uh, it, it doesn't feel like cheap plastic uh, that you generally see on other phones in this segment and it also resists fingerprints and smudges to a great extent i don't think you can notice smudges uh, it doesn't easily get smudged up on the front you can notice that there is a larger than usual chin at the bottom uh, also there is the panda glass protecting the display it's probably a cheaper version of gorilla glass moving on there is nothing much to talk about the cameras there is a 13 megapixel main camera and a 2 megapixel depth sensor and a mere 5 megapixel selfie camera very similar to what you can find on other similarly priced phones cannot expect much from this setup i spent some time shooting a few pictures so do go through them and let us know your thoughts about the photos as well as the phone as for my opinion i think this is a fairly decent phone for the price phones like the realme c3 c12 uh, redmi 9i don't have some of the features that the moto e7 power has like the type c port the lpddrx uh, ddr4x ram the emcp storage some of them don't even have a fingerprint scanner so uh, the one good competitor to this phone is the micromax in 1b which has very similar specifications and on top of that there is a helio g35 chip uh, this one has g25 so this variant of the e7 power with 4gb ram is priced at 8300 rupees the 2gb ram 32gb storage variant which i don't recommend cost 7500 so those are my thoughts and initial impressions hope you enjoyed the video and found something useful in it thanks for watching see you in the next one bye and take care